tell me. You live? Yep. <laughs> All right. Someone says it's his son Jackson's sixth birthday today, and he's a huge fan. He's watching, so it'd be cool if you could wish him a happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Justin. Jackson. Jackson. Happy birthday, Jackson. Thanks for joining in. Appreciate you watching my channel. Let's hear uh, where y'all are from. I'm just scuffing up this license plate real quick. We're doing some metal flake on that and a couple other helmets. But uh, and a lot of people ask, you know, the, the metal flaking process. We figured we'd do another live here. My wife, Ashley, holding the phone for me. And uh, we'll show you how it's done. It's pretty easy to do. The only problem is it's about 62 degrees in here, so uh, the paint's going to take a little bit to dry, but we're going to go light on it, um, and we should be fine. Hopefully no runs. We'll cross our fingers. I'll go throw this in the booth with the other the helmets. You want to get a view of the other helmets we'll be painting. So we got a couple of these uh, you know, the cap style helmets. They're already black based, so it's, it's nice that that's already done because we don't have to throw a black base on it. I do have a couple of areas like right here where I burnt through. Um, so we'll need to lay out some black base coat on that in order to cover that before we flake it. So um, you'll still be able to see the process of it, the black base coat going on, except for we're just going to hit it in this one area to take care of that problem. Okay, we'll kind of go over the, the tools and the uh, products that we'll be using to make this happen. Um, I do have the uh, Limeline disposable cup system here with the hard cup, the liner, and then here's the lid. Um, we will be cutting this out later, and I'll kind of show you that as well. We have the Limeline sprayable metal flake. We have some black base coat. Uh, we have some 2K clear coat, and that's what we'll be using to mix the metal flake with and I know I've got a lot of questions on whether or not to mix the flake with an inner coat clear a clear base coat also known as a clear base coat inner coat clear same thing or mix it with a regular clear coat top coat and that's what we're going to be doing uh, reason being is because it lays out smoother and um, there's some other reasons behind that too but uh, I did say we did need us to, to touch up a couple areas on that back of that helmet with some black base coat. So if we look at the instructions here, let's go ahead and pull this out. Okay, th this whole pack is meant to mix with one pint of a uh, clear coat or a clear base coat if you want. But I'm telling you, you, you go with the clear coat, you're gonna have um, a better time and it's gonna level out better. Get less work, less materials. Mix one packet with 16 ounces, which is one pint. And you do, and I get asked this a lot too, you do want to spray this over. You don't have to, it's not a hard rule, but it does look much better and it has a lot more sparkle if it's applied over a black base coat. So like I said, those, those are already painted black. We're just gonna to touch it up a little bit, but say that those were primer, we would still use the same uh, system that we're doing here as far as using the black base coat and then moving on to the metal flake. So let's go ahead and do that. We got the black base coat here. Now, base coat is, it's not like clear coat. See this clear coat right here? It doesn't say clear coat, but we have the main clear coat and we have the activator, the hardener that chemically hardens it. Base coat's not like that. Base coat is just a one part and then we reduce it with urethane reducer to make it sprayable. That's all we do. 
that means that if we were to re spray this on and re-wet it with like lacquer thinner or anything like that it would come right off because it's not um it's not a two-part it's not chemically set setting up to where uh that it would be that durable so keep that in mind uh base coat is only a one part in most cases and um you just use that reducer to be able to thin it out we're just going to mix up a little bit because we just need to touch that up we'll take we're gonna go about a one-to-one -one mixture. So what do we got here? We got about two ounces. So what we'll do is we'll just mix roughly two ounces in there. Now, once again, it's not a hard rule. You can mix this up. Like if I was mixing this up for airbrush paint, it would have more reducer in it because um, the tip's smaller. You know, so it needs to be thinner in order to spray out of it. This is a 1.3 and we're gonna use this gun all the way through, starting with the base coat and then even through the uh, metal flake and the clear coat, we're gonna use uh, just this one gun. Mix that up. I gotta go grab my respirator. I'll be right back. All right, so got the base coat with the reducer in there. I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up to the gun. Give it a little shake. We already stirred it, so it should be good. All right. I'll go ahead and grab that. Thank you. All right, hopefully you guys can hear me. It's pretty loud in here. Let me hook up this gun. There we go. All right, we have black base coat in here. Make sure. Oh yeah, okay. We have a little spot right there. Oh, look, I also burned through that ribbon. Let's go ahead and... Go far right there. Base coat is meant to, it dries really fast. So um, it's not like regular 2, 2K clear coat. This stuff's gonna dry pretty fast and we're ready to uh, mix up some metal flake right now. All right, take that. All right. How do I look and see if they had questions? Yeah, we'll have time for questions in, in just a second. Let me get this mixed up. Cause we'll have some dry times where we can shoot the shit, you know? Slip a new cup in there. All right, let me, uh, let me show you something that hopefully you don't forget. Now in these lids, they have a uh, filter that's built in, which is great. It works really well for, for anything, but if you're looking to spray metal flake or anything that's high metallic, you're gonna wanna pull that out. If not, it's just gonna trap all your flake and all you're gonna do is get the really little flakes and you don't want that. So let's go ahead and rip that out. There we go. All right, we're gonna take some clear coat. Now we're not gonna mix up the whole packet because I don't think there's any reason to do that. 
Um, and then, like I said, there's no real hard rules on the mixture except for when it comes to the two part clear coat. This is a two to one. So that means uh, for every two parts of this, we got one part of the hardener. What do we got there? Oh, we got three ounces. We'll go with, let's make four ounces. That way, there we go, four ounces. And what's that gonna make? Two ounces, right? Yep. Two ounces of this, so that's six ounces. There we go. Okay, you do want to make sure that you measure anything that has a hardener, you want to make sure you measure it out. When it comes to thinner, um, you can really just pour it in and you'll get an idea. But usually one to one is where you start with the thinner on most stuff. Okay, we're gonna take the packet. And um, so one pint, which is 16 ounces. We're not even close to 16 ounces. We're at six ounces. So let's just go ahead and put like less than half of it. Maybe just a little more. Okay, that's it. So there's still a lot in there. Let's put the cap on. Make sure it locks down all the way. Always pull it up and check your seal. You got a collar here. Now I didn't mix this up, so definitely gonna wanna shake it up in here. We wanna get those two parts mixed together really good. If not, you just stir it with the stir stick, but. Okay, now this is the Limeline 1.3 gun. Um, like I said, we're, we use this for the, the base coat. Uh, now we're going to use it for the flake, and we'll uh, clean it out, and we'll use it for the final clear over the top to kind of bury it all. All right. Let me go ahead and get this plugged in, and I'll grab that. And that's all I'm going to do for the first pass. Like I said, it's pretty cold here in the booth. Um, it's 60, probably like 62, 63 degrees right now. That's going to cause this clear coat to take a little bit longer to dry. Um, to kind of combat that a little bit, I'll make sure that I do lighter coats. That way, um, it, it has a, it'll dry easier by doing lighter coats. So if you're working in conditions that aren't optimal and it's a little colder, uh, take your time, do lighter coats till the end, and then go ahead and hit it heavy. pretty light so I'm gonna go ahead and spray one more coat on here
So that was two coats. It's looking pretty good. I'll probably just do one more um, here in like five minutes. We're gonna let that flash off a little bit. And then we'll give it like, since I'm spraying it light, we, we don't have to wait as long. Like if I was to like coat it really thick right now, it could literally, you'd have to wait like 20 or 30 minutes. So, um, because the conditions are not uh, optimal because it's really cold and it's nighttime here and the shop eater can only do so much. Um, we're just kind of spraying it light and uh, that way we can, not gonna have any problems with runs and stuff will flip. Do we have any questions? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how to, how to look them up. Oh yeah, uh, right here. Uh, Oh, there we go. Let's see. Go ahead. You can just. Someone said, "What size?" flake is that so the flake, the metal flake good question metal flake is a mixture of 0 0.08 and 0 0.04 and I know a lot of people they, the first thing they say is I want the biggest flake like like I've heard it all the time like you know paint my bike man I want the biggest flake but I'm telling you the biggest flake is not necessarily the the most sparkly and the best looking in my personal opinion um, not only that is huge flake is hard to deal with and you have to put a lot of materials on to uh, to be able to flush it out and then someone said is your two-stage clear available at your store yet um, two-stage clear 2k no not quite yet For, uh, first of next month And then someone said about how many packets of the flake would I need for a full street glide bagger paint job? Um, you know, I would, uh, two packs are going to do it, but I would probably get three just to be on the safe side. Depends on how much flake you want to put it in. Like if you have stretched bags or it kind of depends on how you spray it as well. If you do, if you're doing the inner fairing, um, definitely, or a tour pack, definitely get three bags. If not, you would probably be good with two if you're not doing all those extra parts. And then someone said, tried flow coating a tank today and of course ran it a bit. How long do I wait to sand cut and buff those boo-boos using u pull Clear? Um, you can probably get on it tomorrow. It kind of depends on how warm it is in your shop. But uh, as far as cut and buff, usually I can get on it the next day. Uh, if it's kind of cold, maybe wait one more day and cut and buff the following day after that. So let it give it a day to sit. But don't wait too long. And then someone said, is your gun adapters for your cups plastic or metal? They're plastic. Someone said, is the floor of your paint booth covered in metal flake? That stuff's all over the floor in my shop. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Look at that. Floor, it's all over my house. It's everywhere. <laughs> That's a true story. All right, I'm going to get a fresh cup here. Put that in there. We're going we're to stick with the same clear coat, the 2K clear coat. Uh, this will be the new stuff from Liveline that's coming out. Not quite available yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and mix the same thing up, um, the two parts together, but we're not going to put any flake in it this time. We'll go to the four again. Whoa, I did a little too much. Whoops. There, I'm going to make up for it. 
There we go. Now it's even. Okay. Grab another lid. Pop that baby on. Give it a little shake. We'll shake it when it's on the gun to you. Couple questions. I'm going to ask him. Yeah, quick? yeah, sure you can. Okay. Um, someone said, "Is there a big difference in durability between a two-part 2K versus a KBS Diamond Clear?" Hmm. I don't know anything about uh, KBS Diamond Clear. I'm guessing it's a two-part. Still. Maybe I'll have, they'll have huh. to answer back and see. And then yeah, I'm not. I don't know about that brand. I guess I've seen it. I just don't know about it. And then let's do one more question. Before we'll spread it out. Let's see. It says, "Can you please talk about the Limeline glass flake? I have both your metal and glass flakes. The glass makes a different look for sure." Yeah. Well, here's the glass right here. We can kind of look at that. Um, and let's actually take a look at both of these side by side. When you lay out the glass, it's gonna be a lot lighter and brighter. And uh, there are some differences. It is, does take at least a, you can spray out of a 1.7 and a 1.3 on this, even though it says 1.4 and 1.8, um, I have found. So um, this takes a little more work to flush it out uh, because the sizes are a lot bigger uh, and they're a random cut which and these ones are um, just two sizes those are just random like uh, chips of glass so they it this def definitely does have more of a sparkle both of these in my opinion should be applied over black base coat but mixing it the same way bigger gun uh, you're probably going to need a little more clear coat when it comes to the end to be able to get it to flush out. Um, about the KBS, he says KBS is one part. It's air activated. Oh, it's not going to be as durable. You could run into problems when you're recoating that over the top. Um, that could cause like wrinkling and other disturbances like that that you will find. Um, the nice thing about using regular two-part clear coat because we're building these parts up with a two-part It's chemically hardened. So if we're using just a regular clear base coat It's uh, two things. It's going to dry faster before it hits and It's going to cause the flake to kind of lay at different angles um, And then it's gonna it's gonna make it harder to flush that out when it when it's mixed into clear coat it takes a longer for it to dry and it's going to level so kind of self level itself out and the fact that having a two part when you start with a two part and you're in with a two part you're going to have a more durable paint job because you don't have all of those um, uncatalyzed unhardened uh, layers underneath and which is fine but when you start to build it up like with flake and you're building up super thick with a one part clear it just doesn't it doesn't make sense. This is easier, faster, cheaper, easier. What did I say easier? <laughs> it's better, but you can still do it other ways. But I'm telling you, save yourself the time and the money and use 2K clear coat when you're spraying either of those. Yep. Okay, going back in. Just pull it out, it's not working. Yeah. You sound straight up. There you go. Okay, so looking pretty good here. Uh, we're not going to put another coat of that, we're going to go straight to the uh, clear coat.
Okay. You can see that's starting to, see if I can get an angle on here. You can see that's already starting to build up over the top just with that first coat. And we're starting to get rid of that texture and that, uh, that orange peel that's created. Uh, I'm using a, oh, I didn't see that question. Okay, you wanna take that? Question? Yeah, I think there was a question on there. Okay. Um, so some comments and stuff, but then a question, someone says, What's your setup on your gun as far as PSI, fan, and fluid? Uh, PSI is, uh, right there um, was about 28 pounds. Uh, the fluid tip is a 1.3, and that's what's required at least for the metal flake. Um, what was the other question? The fan and the fluid. Full fan. Full fan on all the time. Unless you're spraying like a frame or something. Um, and then someone said, with your adapters being plastic, do you think there will be problems with them lasting a while? I don't have a production shop, but I do spray a good bit. I want to support everywhere I can. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I've never had an issue. Keeps the gun lighter. So I like it plastic. But I've never had a problem with stripping out or anything like that. So, good shot. Someone said, uh, Chris said, I sprayed that flake thick over a blue background, so thick that it made, oh no, my question, it went away. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, so thick that it only has a blue glow, made awesome base for the artwork. Oh, really? That's awesome. Someone says, no gloves today? Uh, I need them. I ran out. <laughs> I have pink ones, but I felt weird. <laughs> Somebody super chat me a box of gloves, will ya? <laughs> I can get you some from work. Uh, They're not black. No, I need black gloves. They're blue. Anybody has questions, you can ask them now. I have them free. <laughs> I'm here. I'm ready. What are you drinking? Let me know. Coffee and uh, nugget ice cubes. Actually, it's just espresso and ice. It's late. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> Larry sent you twenty dollars. Oh yeah, with my gloves. <laughs> Thanks, that's, Larry. <laughs> that's gonna buy a nice box of gloves. <laughs> I'm getting the good ones. Someone said they have pur purple gloves, but pink would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someone said, "How much flake for an '86 six Oldsmobile Cutlass Lowrider?" Whoa. Well, I'm just going to guess. It depends on how um, thick you want the flake. If, it, if you did it something like right here, we did on this, I would say um, you could probably get it done in like five bags. But maybe by six. <laughs> I don't know. Chris sent you fifty dollars. Whoa! He said, gloves man. are now available on Limelight. Oh man, I'm gonna have gloves every time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Appreciate that. Then someone said, "Do you spray any cars or just bikes?" Um, I mostly do bikes, but I am gonna do some uh, when it warms up. I'm gonna do some stuff here pretty soon on a car. And then someone said. Can you show us how to use acetone acetone for texture sometime? Hmm. 
I don't think I've ever done that. And I'm trying to think of what would, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone said, I went and bought a big two-stage compressor and other supplies. It's all your fault, Adam. Oh, yeah. Glad to hear you got a two-stage. What and you need. And then someone said, would you sell vinyl, vinyl stickers for Harley Davidson logos on your store for the people that don't have a cutter? Probably not. I think there's a, definitely a gray area with that. Probably don't want to sell anything that has that. But um, who would have that? Yeah, you could, if you don't want all the letters, like the Harley Davidson and you just want the bar and shield, you could cut that out with like an X-Acto blade. Just print it out and transfer it onto the vinyl and then cut it out with an X-Acto blade. And then you don't even need it. If you're just doing the outline of it, don't try to cut out the letters, that'd be terrible. And then someone said, I don't have a setup yet to run a gun, so I'm using Spray Max 2K Clear for final coat. I did use 1K Clear after base coat, laid down graphics, then 2K cleared it. Is that okay? I probably wouldn't do that again. Um, if it worked, you're gonna be fine. Um, the problem is sometimes when you're putting a 2K, you can have problems sometimes by having that much uncatalyzed material laid out and then trying to put a 2K over the top of that, you could have issues. If um, if you are doing it that way, just um, apply the clear coats light and let them build up slowly rather than saturating them all at once. So yeah, you're okay with the 2K Spray Max clear coats that out of the can. They actually work pretty good and they're two parts, so you're good. You got it, you're covered. <laughs> Someone said... Would you use the inner coat as a carrier for candy or use the 2K clear as your candy carrier? Nope. Yep. <laughs> nope and yep. Nope or yep. <laughs> so, um, no, I would not use 2K for the carrier for the candy. You can, um, but I feel like it has more, it can sag and you could run into more problems um, with uh, spraying in a, uh, in a clear coat because it stays wet longer. So no, I would use clear base coat, inner coat clear with the uh, with the bind or with the, with the canvas. Um, then someone said, do you have a personal bike collection that you've painted custom? That you custom painted, sorry. A bike? or a bike collection that you custom painted. Yeah, I have a few here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll show them. We'll show them after. Okay, we'll show them a couple of things that are here, I guess. Um, how did you do the leaf pattern on the gas tank with the gold leafing? The filigree pattern? Is I'm that, not sure. I'm thinking that's what he's saying. That one I'm still working on. Um, I used a stencil, and what did I do? I cut it out of a out of the plotter on the Cricut. Okay, so we Hopefully were talking. We were talking about the one K and the two K. So here's a follow up question to that. He right. says, so the clear one K binder should not be used for flake and use a single stage for mixing candy. Correct. It's not really considered a single stage though. It's just considered candy base coat. Because you're mixing it with a base coat. It tries to go to dry faster. Yeah. I asked him if he'd do a bit video on that too, because we talked about that last week. And you are. Yeah. When difference. you get all the stuff. Which I think will be helpful for there's so many people who've asked that question, so I think yeah. it'll be good. Yeah, probably like the difference between uh two K clear coat and you know, clear base coat, how they act different, what makes them different, and when to use them, and what to mix them with, and how to spray them, because they're both sprayed different. And then someone said, I bought the Limeline Leafing Kit, seen you do it several times and it looks easy. What about trying other patterns 
in the leaf other than engine turn, like a flaky leaf look. Yeah, give it a shot. Um, experiment with it. That's all I gotta say. Is, is a lot of good ideas come from just trying things out. I know that people have like um, put like a basket weave in it. I can't remember exactly how they did it, but it looks cool. You know, personally, I like the engine turn. I just do it every time because I love it so much. I don't know. It just makes it look fancy. Gives it makes it 3D. E. Brown sent you a $20 super chat. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. I think he won something. That's coming to him. E. Brown, Larry, and Chris. Thanks, guys. Yeah, appreciate that. Uh, someone says, with all the cool designs you have made, what has been your favorite project and why? Mm. I liked the... Uh, the, the mini truck 90s bagger that I did for my buddy uh, the, the road glide that was two toned with the, the bright mini truck graphics the neon kind of colors despite my favorite projects for sure then someone said can you activate your inner coat clear if doing bigger candy jobs um there is there is activator I still wouldn't use it and the reason being is because uh, if it's if it's not if it's applied too thin and it's chemically hardened and you go to try to uh, hit that really heavy with clear coat with 2k clear coat those solvents can go in there and once again disturb um, the base coat that's actually underneath that. So if you don't have a, a hard, if you do have a hardened layer and it's not thick enough, and you have a uh, layer down below that's not hardened, not chemically hardened, just like a base coat, well, it could penetrate those solvents. If you hit them too fast, too hard, they could penetrate through into that base coat, re-wetting that layer that's underneath what's already been hardened, and that's what causes it to crack, crack or craze or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it, it, so you got to be super careful with that, especially doing a car. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't harden that. I would just stick with the, the clear base coat or the inner coat clear, or what does House of Color call it? They call it a, uh, in, uh, I can't remember. They call, they have some fancy name for it, but inner coat clear. Do it. Do that. And then someone says, do you catalyze your candies? No. I know. That's kind of, that's the same as that other question. Um, it's catalyzed. You'd actually catalyze the base coat and the candy together. So, yeah. But no, I don't. I've never done that. And I feel like that would be kind of risky still. Probably because I haven't done it. But maybe you'd be all right. Someone says, do you like the water base size or the regular size and why? Uh, I like the sprayable water-based size because it sprays out thin and it dries fast. And the nice thing is, is you can layer it. You can do two layers with that. You can do um, the glue. So make sure it's clean. You got it taped out. You're gonna spray down your glue. Go really light with it. A couple of coats of that. Within a couple of minutes, you're able to lay down your base layer of leaf. Once that's all cleaned up and brushed up, you can um, spray another layer of glue which you're not able to do that with an oil-based or a regular sizing glue because it goes on so thick and it takes, what, you know, half an hour or something to dry. It, it's just not something you can do. But being able to create a base layer of leaf, putting another layer over the top, gluing that to that, you have now an extra layer below that if you happen to burn through when you're turning, when you go doing the engine turns and spinning it, um, you have that base layer that it'll burn into that, that will protect you because, um, you know, it's fragile, you know, and if you have one layer and you spin it a little bit hard, trying to get a nice spin, you could burn through. And having that extra layer underneath uh, will, it'll save your ass. It really will. And not only that, it makes your edges cleaner. Uh, one thing, a couple of tips with that is just make sure you pay attention to your edges really good. Get them pushed down. Especially if you're not going to pinstripe and you don't plan on pinstriping it, take your time, make sure the edges are down, make sure you got glue everywhere evenly. But uh, yeah, that's 
the that's the advantages of water based being sprayed rather than an oil based being brushed. And then, what type of inner coat clear do you use or recommend? Um, clear base coat, lime line. What clear do you recommend for like show slick for a bagger? Man, I've always used like finish line or um, usually I'll, I, I like Tamco. Um, it all kind of depends on what, you know, what you prefer. I've sprayed U-Pole and it has shined it up and it's just fine. I mean, I can't tell the difference to be honest with you than some of these other clears. Yeah, it might be a little thinner and yeah, it uh, may not build quite as fast and it may not level out as smooth as some of the more high-end clear coats. But to be honest with you, if, it, if you're custom painting, you're gonna need to cut and buff your, your work. You're gonna need to sand it, you're gonna need to polish it before you deliver it to the customer, in my opinion. So you might, you know, it don't need to be 100% smooth. You're gonna cut and buff it, so. Uh, and then someone said, the leaf pattern you did, what is it called so I can cut it out on the Cricut? Uh, it's a filigree pattern. Filigree? Did you hear that? Did I hear that? Is that yeah. what you asked? Did you hear that? Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you. Say it without that ice in your mouth. Okay. Filigree? <laughs> there you go. You look up filigree, um, and I think I looked up filigree outline on Google, and was able to find the outline, and then I screenshotted it and put it into my Cricut. Someone said, please put this tutorial up for review. For review? Yeah. So they can look at it again? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All my lives. You can go back to all my lives and rewatch them. Hit that like button, too. I never say that. No, but usually one of your buddies have your back on here and yeah. tell, tell them to hit the like button. But sometimes it works, sometimes yeah, they don't. Yeah, and that definitely helps. So if you hit that like button, maybe more people will see this. Rather than how many is on there? 80? We got 80? 101. 101? Can you Still? flake can you flake through an airbrush? No. You can spray metallic. Really fine metallic through an airbrush. And depending on what you're doing, you can uh Hey, that was my that was my I know, but you don't your your tongue is numb, so you're not talking you're not talking clear. I can't remember the question now. What was the question again? Can you spray flake out of an airbrush? No, you can spray metallics though. So depending <laughs> on what you're doing, metallics might work for what you're doing. And then what kind of inner coat clear do you recommend to spray flakes? Um, yeah, I would use 2K clear coat, so I would use regular clear coat to spray flake. But if you're going to use inner coat, um, use the, I use the Lime Line inner coat clear, or inner coat clear, clear base coat, same thing. And then someone said, will you be coming out with more base coats? I'm looking for some black metallic and only buy your products. Awesome. Okay, so uh, black metallic, it's easy to make that color. You can do one of two things. You can... Um, we have the uh, pigments. We have a silver pigment that's in, that comes with the spoon and all that stuff. You can take some of the black and then just put a splash of that um, color pigment. pigment in there. Or you can even put the purple in there or whatever. And um, you can definitely liven up that black and make it a... Uh, Maybe you can metallic. do one of those lives and show them. Yeah, yeah, that is. Most people don't know you can do that with black. That's what's nice about black is you can... You can put metallics and stuff in them and they'll show up. Now, however, the weird thing is, if you try to do that with white base coat, and say you try to like put a pearl in there and make a pearl white, it's not gonna look pearl white. It's gonna, the pearl is just gonna soak up into the white, and you're not gonna see nothing. Um, same thing with metallics, it's just, it's just, it's a thing about white or any other color, really. Um, it would be better to spray, like say if you wanna do a, uh, metallic white or a, a pearl white you lay down a white base coat and then you would take clear base coat and put a little bit of that pearl in the clear base coat and do that over the top of the, your black same thing kind of like what we did here uh, let's 
let's see. Someone says, I'm writing out notes, going to call it custom urethane for dummies. If I send you a file by email, will you review it for me? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, someone said I bought an Iwata Eclipse and studio jet compressor finally pretty excited to get ready to go yeah that's and awesome. then, sounds like you're set up with that yeah I like it and then someone said what's, what's your next live going to be on we're skipping next week oh yeah so we're not going to be live next week uh, we'll be out of town and so the week after that, who knows? Yeah. We'll do, we, in fact, we might do maybe something on one of these. I don't know. I have that license plate frame that we were, we're flaking in there. Maybe we'll do something with that. Maybe with some, I don't know, palm trees or something. I don't know. If you have any ideas, throw them out. I would love to, to hear. Sometimes I, a lot of times I'll think the day of of what I'm going to do. Then I can't. The whole week I'll think, I'm like, I don't know what to do, and then I just pick something. But yeah, let me know. If there's something you guys want to learn, or even if it's about mixing paint or something like that, uh, let me know and I'll try to make that happen. Someone said, Do you have any plans to perhaps do a custom class we could attend? Like a few days we do a custom mini hood or something on that idea? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, the closest thing I'm doing to that is I'll be at Autorama in Salt Lake City, March 3rd, 4th, and 5th, I think. Yeah, I think that's the date. Uh, it's that weekend, the first weekend of March, and there'll be some hands-on, kind of informal stuff going on there. So if you happen to be in the Salt Lake City area during that time, um, there is that indoor car show that you can go to that will be set up at, where you can learn. Okay, I think it's ready for another coat. And then if there's any more questions, we'll get those taken care of. Let's get the last coat on. That's gonna do it. That's uh. In a second, I'll just bring it back in there once that kind of flows out, and we can kind of see what the surface looks like. Okay, there's a couple more. Let's see. Daniel said, "See you there at Autorama." Oh yeah, all right. And Johnny says, "I wish I was in Utah." Cold as hell here. You don't want to be here. <laughs> probably cold where he's at too though so <laughs> maybe um let's see hmm. anyone see any problem with putting 2k clear over a 
I, I don't know, I might botch this word, Tamia Lame Flake Polycarb Spray. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. <laughs> And then someone said, can you use pearl in place of, say, a candy or black shadow when doing graphics? Um, what would it do? Using a candy for a shadow? No. Can you use a pearl in place of, say, a candy or a black shadow? Um, you can use a pearl, but I don't think using it as a shadow would work. Um, well, yeah, it would... You can, uh, I guess the question would be, can you replace the candy with, uh, uh, instead of the, the pearl, instead of the candy? And yes, you can. You can use candy. Pearls are, are mixed the same way as like what a candy would be. Well, I think he's saying, uh, can you use it to shadow when doing graphics and what would it do? Mm, it's, I don't think it's gonna work like that, but try it. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Um, and then someone said, suggest a tape pinstripe outline flame. Oh, this live is crazy. It like goes away. Hold on, let me see. Uh, suggest a, a tape pinstripe outline flame with a pile of skulls inside the flames for the license plate. Black background with gold flames and gold candy. Wow, that sounds cool. That's what they suggest for next live. The next live? And then someone said, the next life should be a continuation of these lids, stripes, candy, stencil, etc. Okay. Um, what size flake is that? Uh, 0 0.04 and 0 0.08 mixed. Okay, that question that I asked you that says, anyone see any problem with putting the 2K clear over the Tamiya Lane Blake, he, he, he says it's a 100 mil spray can for spraying model RC cars. That's what that is that you've never heard of. Oh, it is? Mm -hmm. Am I still supposed to answer a question there? Because I don't know. <laughs> so you don't know confused. anything about that. <laughs> uh, test it out on something before you do it on something big that's important if you don't know. Um, is it possible to spray Metal Flake? With the HBLP? Yes, absolutely. And then what are you cleaning the gun with? A uh, lacquer thinner. A ketchup bottle. <laughs> In the ketchup bottle. Um, looks great. Someone says it's 12 degrees in Wisconsin now. Yeah, how cold is it outside? Uh, not 12. Not 12, but maybe 27, 28-ish? Yeah, it's Probably like 20. It's cold. It's cold. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's cold. Any chance I can buy only the... Oh, these questions just like disappear. Any question I can... <laughs> Let me try that again. Any chance I can buy only the metal flake you use for your base coat pigments? If not, do you know anywhere that is that does that sells the base coat pigments yep they're on Amazon limelight I think yeah right Did I get that question I don't know uh, yeah so you can everything I'm using you can get uh, on Amazon there so it's probably the limelight base coat <laughs> Dan That's... saying no no laugh out loud I I must have messed up <laughs> I don't know. I don't, Try again, Dan. I don't, I don't know, know what else. the. Try again. <laughs> I'm not sure what the heck I, I read. <laughs> He'll retype me some. Uh, someone said it's 28 degrees in central Utah. Oh. All right, Dan. Let's see. He says. No, no. Laugh out loud. Only the flake used. So he says, any chance I can buy only the flake you use for the base pigments? Uh, no, <laughs> you can only buy it in the back. <laughs> and then he said, Ashley, how many adult beverages today? Or is it the solvents? Dude, None. it's the solvents. I tell you, <laughs> that, that gets to me so quick. 
You guys all make sure you wear, wear your respirators. I don't know. If you're like Adam, he doesn't even... I mean, he's pretty good at wearing it, but the smell is bad. <laughs> yeah, I gotta wear them. Yes, wear them. Do you have any special ideas for getting clear to dry when it's that cold? Uh, light coats. Stick with the light coats. Just, just go um, slower with it. Um, thanks for sharing your knowledge. What's the highest humidity level you you'd recommend for spraying 2K clear coat? Don't know. How to answer that question? I wish I did know more about that, but um, we don't. Yeah. We don't have much humidity here. We're pretty dry. Um, so yeah, I don't ever have to battle that here in Utah. I know in Florida and Texas that they say stuff about it, but it doesn't make any sense to me because I don't have any problems with it. And then, let's see. Chris says, he has forgot to use his subscriber discount code and bought so much stuff. Oh man! So he wants to wants you to send him a T-shirt. <laughs> I don't have a T-shirt, but um, man, you should use that. Let me know next time you make an order on Instagram. Hit me up on Instagram, and I'll uh, throw some more stuff in there. All right, then let's see. Dan says, I'm thinking outside the box. If I get the flake used in the pigments, then I can add to any base coat I already have. Like you said, we bend the rules. Yeah. Yeah, but you're going to, you can use the silver, the silver base coat pigment is a really, really fine metallic flake. So you could use that in your black, like straight up in your black paint and make it like a black like a dark black metallic and then you put a little candy over that and it looks phenomenal the guy that's asking about the humidity said it's 80 percent plus humidity he's in new zealand holy crap and he said the 2k went cloudy yep i can imagine that how would you deal with that how do you deal with that yeah i don't know humidifier that's what i was gonna say but <laughs> i don't think that's really a I don't true know. thing <laughs> but maybe someone said in oklahoma it's 80 percent humidity and it will start to cloud too really see i don't know anything about this because we don't have that problem but i'm guessing if you were to i don't even know i'm not even gonna give advice on it because i don't know nothing about it then someone said, my booth is a mess with red flake. Can never get rid of it. That sucks, especially red. Yeah, that is terrible. Um, someone said, it's super, right, super fine. It's awesome. I sprayed House of Color Brandywine over your silver metallic. Came out great. Nice. Yeah, I love the Brandywine over any flake. That's looks like a million bucks and someone asked what's the lowest temperature you would spray in uh, probably wouldn't go under 60 but yeah 60 would probably be the minimum and then Yes, Larry, all my, my German beer calendar is gone. Oh. Gotta find something else to drink on these lives to hang out with all Adam's buddies. Then said, someone said, check out Vera Customs or something in South Texas with extra high humidity. Yeah, maybe that dude could help you out. Yeah, well, he's on YouTube. Oh. Right? Well, Chris is just saying to check him out. Oh yeah, yeah. He maybe he he definitely probably knows more about it. Okay, I'll take him in. See us for the last time. Yep. Yep. Yeah.
those off. Oh, sure. That's okay for me. There we go. Take him outside. In the snow? No. Oh, show him the bikes. Show him the bikes. Here we go. Which one? Where are we going? Oh, uh, we might as well start with this one real quick. Okay. Do the image transfer. So, uh, some of you guys may have seen the video on this one. Filmed that uh, about a year and a half ago. It's my buddy's bike. But image transfer there. We did the metal flake. Same process that we did in the booth there. So to kind of give you an idea, there's the original silver, like what we sprayed in the booth. That's the same silver with red candy over the top. So it's just a red dye that goes over the top, still still showing the sparkle with the silver. So we're just, we're just dyeing the silver red there, pretty easy, outlined in black. Um, faded the image transfer in there. Show them the seat right here, can you see that? Show them the seat. This is this is the coolest part. Here, let me grab that. They gotta see the seat. It used to look better, but yeah, there we go. Uh, did the restoration on the paint on this pan head for my buddy. Kickback cycles. Just a birch white kind of base coat with the uh, black base coat. And then we got baby 78. Hold on, I'm making my way. Okay. I don't want to make him sick. <laughs> <laughs> Show him the A side over here. This side? Uh, 78 shovel head. It's my buddy's bike too, kickback. But once again, uh, metal flake here. You can see the, here's the original, the original silver that's left. The rest of it's all been dyed with candies. So this is an orange mixed with a little bit of root beer brown and some gold. Bunch of different patterns and whatnot, some flowers, kind of make it hippie style. Oh, forgot you did that too. Mm -hmm. uh, pan head with no paint, just polished metal. show to see the bagger. Bring them over there. Let's... Where? This one? Yeah. Maybe the other side. This is a 80... What is it? 84. Sturgis shovel head. There's a helmet. Mike Tyson helmet. Let me flip on the light, huh? This is 
a 78 Seville. Has airbags, all that good stuff. We're in the middle of doing a LS swap in this thing because it was running like crap. Once again, the metal flake here. Black, outlined in black. Show them that right there. So yeah, you can see the fine line tape there. That's it. Okay, any more questions? Mm, let's Go see. Back. Okay. Let's see. Carport Customs, what's up, dude? <laughs> we need to get her, get her a beer sponsor, people. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's all we need. <laughs> uh, cool, I've just been an indoor... See how it goes away? Yeah. Indoor grow tent, that's a great idea for a paint booth. Ahoy, they must have saw the pirate bike. Nice seat, nice sissy bar. Should I use inner coat clear with candy colors to add color onto silver leafing or do you recommend yes. using oh, you got that? No, oh. yep, you're you're on the right track there. The inner coat clear with the candy colors, you can apply that over the silver leafing for sure. Holy exhaust, I bet that's about baby. Yeah. <laughs> Gorgeous 78, nice pipes. I need to ride that to Sturgis, that's sick. Springer, use candy over silver leaf. Oh, that's missing the deer animal. That's cool. <laughs> I do custom leather work. Oh, right on. Oh, cool. Michael Jarvis does his leather work. Okay, I think that's it. Plague and patterns. Okay, that's all the questions. What's it? Special instead of the antlers, what we have instead of the antlers. What's the antlers? That. Most people have antlers hanging up, but we. Look, I'll you show, show you guys. You want. Look, most of the time you, you said antlers. Well, no one has this thing on the ceiling way up there. That at one time was a big backdrop. You said a show. It's pretty cool. Someone said, Do you have a full size paint booth? Uh, no, I think it's a 14 by. 14. Um, any sh any shows you go to on the any shows you go to on the East Coast? Uh, I haven't really no. Hopefully soon though. Um, let's see. Do you chase the do you chase the lacquer thinner with something else to keep the O-rings from being damaged? Uh, that's a good question. I know that people, some people do, they'll use like a MBK, MBK I think it's MBK. Um, it has like a little more oil to it that um, definitely helps with that. I haven't had a really a problem though. Lots of people just saying, cool shop, thanks a lot. Thanks again, killer shop, cool shop tour. Maybe next time I'll show you the second or third level. Okay. <laughs> okay. All, All right, right, guys. Remember, again, we're not here next Thursday because we're going out of town. So we're going to miss you all next Thursday, but we'll we'll see you in, no, uh, not November, February. What am I talking about? It's my birthday month. I can't forget it. <laughs> All right, guys. See ya. See you guys.